So when I take on a lot of different types of consulting projects for a lot of my corporate clients, inevitably I'm asked to help them profile what would be a successful salesperson or sales manager for their organization. There's a very famous study back in 2002 from Harvard Business School, which I, have a, I do a lot of work with, where they um, uh, determined, tried to determine what made a great salesperson great. But I do believe that there's a specific profile that, uh, that indicates someone's going to be you know, pretty good at sales. Certainly something that came up on the study, number one, is this notion of 100% accountability for all results. But it's an important idea because what it really says is it's a high sense of ego. The idea that you believe, as a salesperson, that you can impact your own uh, future and your results by your decisions, by your behavior. It's empowering and you believe you can make your own way by the decisions you make and by the actions that you take. Keeping your ego in check is a pretty critical element, but having that high sense of ego clearly is a hallmark of being a great salesperson. Another element though that showed up on Harvard's study is this idea of not taking no personally. And it's actually a big thought not to take no personally. One of the things I teach all the time in the program is it's very important with your prospects that you establish that you can handle their yes and handle their no with grace. So one of the things that's important to do in sales early is ask for things you're not gonna get. Actually ask for something that you're probably gonna get a no to and then move on. Another thing that's critical is to be intensely goal oriented. And that covers all the entire selling process from the first call all the way down to the close. Really be focused on what do you want? What are you trying to achieve from this moment? I think great reps are a little more specific. You know, they're like, I want to close for a referral. I want to find a name. I want to see if it's pain or pleasure. I want to get past the gatekeeper. I want to get a meeting. So having goals is pretty critical at every element. AIDA, attention, interest, desire, action. Are you trying to get them engaged? Trying to get them interested? Are you trying to get them to want it? Or are you trying to get them to do something? Those are four completely different behaviors and it starts with a salesperson knowing what they want out of that moment. The final bit on the Harvard study that I think is so remarkable is this notion of being impeccably honest with yourself and customers. There's a, certainly a lot of salespeople that aren't impeccably honest and I think they pay that price. But the truly great gifted salespeople around the world understand that being impeccably honest with yourself and with your customers is critical. And it's not just about saying the right things about the product or not you know, saying negative things about the competitor. It, it goes beyond that. It includes having an opinion. It's, it includes saying things like, I believe this or I want this. One of the things we do a lot in our programs is really get down to the little things, the small things that we often are guilty of doing because we think it looks good or we're trying to be appealing, or we're trying to build rapport. In reality, all we're doing is not really being genuine and not being ourselves, and I think it can hurt us. Two other things that I'd add to this list of four I just mentioned. The first is the notion of embracing silence. A silence is, without a doubt, your biggest friend in closing. There's never been a close written, and I know a lot of them, that can contend with what silence can give you as far as your ask. It not only allows you to learn way more about your customer than you would have without it, it immediately gives a sense of relief and calm to you while demonstrating tremendous confidence and tremendous sophistication. That's a big part of what we do in these programs is show you where silence can matter. And, and yeah, don't think it's natural. You have to learn how to embrace silence, and we teach that. And the last thing that I'd want to share with you that's so important to me, and I think important to, 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 to any great rep, is demonstrating intellectual curiosity. That doesn't mean you have to be a rocket science, and it doesn't mean that you have to read the Wall Street Journal every morning, but it does mean you have to have some level of curiosity about things that are interesting, and that specifically includes your customers. If you can't truly come up with an interesting question, or something you want to learn from a customer or prospect, I'd argue you have no business meeting with him or her. Selling always starts and ends with them, not you. And your ability to really embrace and feel what it's like to learn as a student from your customer can do far more to your paradigm than any other buyer, seller, trick, or technique you might learn. Sales is an amazing journey, an amazing career, but it's not for children. It's for adults. And you've got to love this job to really, really be successful.